Good morning, church. One more time. Good morning, church. There we go. Glad to have everybody here. And for those that are joining us on the live stream, thank you so much uh, for being a part of our assembly today. You know, the Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due. And one of our goals here, it always has been, always will be, is to take the gospel to the whole world. We dream about how to do that. And there are those in the that have kind of set the pace for us in years past. Today we have uh, with us Ricky and Denise Hayes, who uh, many of you will remember, uh, and were our missionaries to Manaus, Brazil, right in the middle of the Amazon. And they went and planted a church there, things we talk and dream about for our, the next generation to go and do. And that church is still going strong and doing great. And uh, they spent a lot of years sharing the Lord down there. and so. Rick and Denise, thank you. Well, you. Guys, stand up for us, please. Rick and Denise Hayes, our church planners. Thank you so much. Thank you for your willingness to go. Ricky has started coming here on the, on the joy bus, didn't you, Rick? Uh, so every ministry had a hand in that thing, I'll tell you what, and, uh, and, and, and took a hold of that dream to take the gospel of the world. He went through the school of preaching here. We were, in, uh, we were in class together. I've never seen anyone work any harder than Ricky Hayes and had a great love for the lost. Thank you all for, for what you've done for the kingdom. And by the way, that church has Brazilian leadership. It continues to plant other churches around that country. And so, uh, so that's a great model uh, for us to continue to make those kinds of things happen. Turn to the book of Luke, chapter 23. We're going to look a little bit. We've been looking at this series. It's the last words of Jesus. And so we want to talk a little bit about this. Today is a particular uh, phrase out of the book of Luke. You know, in, in Matthew, in the gospel of Matthew, Jesus is sovereign or king. He's referred to a lot. In Mark, he's referred to as the servant. In John, he is the son. But in Luke, he is the savior. Luke uses the word sinner more than all the other Gospels combined. But then he also turns around and uses the words more often grace and salvation and Savior much more in Luke than you find in any of the Gospels. And so uh, when you get to the book of Luke, you start finding out and hearing words from the Savior at the cross on the one that we're talking about today. Now, many times when you get someone talk, says, I'm going to talk and do a lesson about the thief on the cross. Look, it's not about you know, what happened in the thief's life or did, well, you know, it's not about what, did he have to be baptized? It's not about uh, 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 what happened uh, with the word paradise. Does that mean you're in between? It's not about those things. This story is a story about hope. This story is a story about Jesus completing his cause all the way to the very end. Let's just read the text. Luke chapter 23, verse 39. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you're under the same sentence, we're punished justly for what we're getting, uh, for we're getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, boy, don't you know these were great words when he heard this? I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. What great words to hear at the end of your life. You know, they were, I, talk, I was reading some different things about different people and phrases and words that, that were said at the end of their life and uh, Bob Hope, I guess he was a true comedian to the very end because when his wife, when he was, when he was dying, his wife asked him, you know, uh, where do you want to be buried? And he said, surprise me. <laughs> All the way to the end. Well, this guy gets to hear these last words. And the last words he says are, remember me. Now think about what a great blessing it was to this guy. Because look, look at what he had seen take, taking place at the... Look, he along with the other guy in the other gospel records, he was throwing insults himself there for a while. 
But he sees this great thing take place at the cross. Now look, he's got the same pain going through his hands that Jesus did. The same pain through his feet. He's on a cross too, right? He is sharing the pain and the shame that, that Jesus felt there too. Now you think about how his day began. His day began, you know, he, he wasn't expecting some great thing to happen that day. He knows he's going to his death. And yet what he saw, even in his torment, he saw a man named Jesus, but he recognized him as much more than that. He saw a guy that claimed to be the Son of God. He saw him and heard him pray for his enemies. He heard him say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He saw a man named Jesus who cared for his mother. He saw a man who ignored the insults and the mockings that took place. He saw a man who suffered injustice with silence. He didn't, he, Jesus wasn't defending himself. He, wasn't, he didn't say, you guys got it all wrong. None of that was taking place. This criminal saw Jesus suffering injustice. He, he himself found hope. Jesus brought hope to a dying man. He saw the one that paid the price for my sin and for yours. He saw a man whose love was greater than the personal pain he was going through. Now think about what that must have been like. I used to think, you know, if I could have been physically there in front of Jesus or in front of the cross, or if I could get someone there that didn't believe right there in front and they could see it happen, it'd make all the difference in the world. But you know, there were people there that saw it happen and it didn't turn their hearts. Matter of fact, there's another thief on the cross there, and it didn't make him turn to God either. You and I, we get to re-look at this thing, and we get to hear this message of hope. But this man, even though this, this man, at the very last part of his life, he found hope in Jesus Christ. Here's what this criminal recognized. He recognized the deity of Jesus and the need to fear God. You think about it. He recognized... He recognized Christ as deity. And he, remember what he said to the other criminal on the cross? When that guy was throwing out insults, and by the way, the word that's used there, the word railed against him, that is the word where we get our word blaspheming. And that's what the other criminal was doing to Jesus when he made those statements about, why well, I just, you, you said you could save other people. Save you just blaspheming. How would you like to die knowing you just blasphemed the creator of the universe? That's why this, the, the other criminal response, look, don't you fear God? I mean, he hears him do this. He said, look, don't you fear God? Now, I think in our culture and in our society, it's easy for us to lose the respect and reverence that we need to have for God, the creator of the universe. Fear God and keep his commandments. And verses like the beginning of, uh, fearing God's the beginning of wisdom. We need to restore at least within our own families. I don't know how much we can impact the culture. I hope we can. But we've raised a culture who do not, they do not know what it's like to fear God and have respect and reverence for the creator of the universe. And you know how I know that? Because I hear even us as our young people, we use the phrase God so lightly that we all of a sudden everything is oh my God. That's not a proper phrase to use. Or when someone says, you know, uh, uh, God this or God that. Look, I'm telling you, we need to teach our children to fear God and quit taking his name in vain. Now, I, I don't know how I got off into all that stuff right there, but anyway, just look, just talk right, okay? This man recognized the need. He said, don't you fear God. Then he recognized his own guilt and the justice he deserved. Look, he's recognizing, I deserve to be here. My sin put me here. My wrongdoing put me here. And he acknowledged that. But he also recognized Jesus' innocence. 
and the injustice that was taking place. You know, when we see an injustice take place, sometimes, boy, it just makes our blood boil, you know? I mean, we see someone mistreated, we see, especially like if it's a child or something, and the injustice there, it's, well, it, 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 and it ought to make us feel terrible. It ought to make us feel bad inside. But can you imagine you're watching Jesus Christ, who's totally innocent, and there he is, being crucified. And injustice takes place. I'm afraid that sometimes we're too slow as God's speak people to speak out against injustice. As a nation, we were too slow in speaking out against the injustice of slavery. We still need to speak out against the injustice of taking babies out of mom's wombs. That's an injustice. And I'm not going to quit talking about it no matter what the government says. It's an injustice. We need to stand for life. There are injustices that take place. And we need to have a voice in our culture from God's people that recognizes those injustices. But boy, nothing was greater than the injustice of God on a cross. And he recognized that he did it for him. It's the power of Jesus to save. And the criminal recognized this. Because he says to him, what? Remember me. Remember me. And then he recognized hope, received hope, when he needed it most. You think about what a great blessing that was. You see the difference a day makes. One day, this guy has no hope, and now all of a sudden, one day, he has the hope of living forever. His day started with hopelessness and ended with hope. His day started with pain and ended in paradise. His day started with shame and ended in salvation. His day started facing death and ended in finding life. And by the way, I think there's kind of a great thing that God did here. I think it's interesting that the Father allows Jesus, who came to, by the way, his purpose, he came to seek and save the lost. Remember that? That on the cross, Jesus got to do with one more individual before he died what he came to do to begin with. One more. I just, if I can just get one more, yeah, yeah, you can, right here, right at the cross. So Jesus, true to his cause and true to his purpose, all the way through his death. And of course, his death made the possibility of all of us finding hope because his death paid for our sins. And how it must have refreshed his heart that even that one individual made the decision that day to put his faith in Christ. Well, your day can end different than it began. Now, I don't know how your day started today. I don't know how your day, uh, if, you, if you were full of misery, or if you're full of brokenness, or, or you're full of hope and assurance and all those kinds of good things, and, and it doesn't need to have a change. But there are people who woke up today and, and, and there's brokenness in their life. I want you to know your day can, your day can end different than it began. Here's some things to take home with us. Number one, talk to Jesus. I know that's a complex statement. You're supposed to laugh at that, by the way. That's a... Remember the old song, Just a Little Talk with Jesus? What did the criminal have? Just a little talk with Jesus. If I had to start every day out like that, Sometimes it can change the whole way my day goes. Just a little talk with Jesus. Number two, believe his promises. That's what this criminal did. He talked to him and he believed his promise. Jesus said to him, look, I'm telling you something that's true. Today, you're going to be in paradise with me. Man, what great news to hear right when you know you're dying, that you're going to be with Jesus. Believe in God's promise. What's God promised you? Remember when God flooded the world 
And after that, he put something in the sky. What was it? Rainbow. A rainbow that promises. God says, I promise I'm, I'm never going to do it like that again. You and I need to learn to trust the promises of God. And in, mess, in, in, in our mess and our brokenness, look, here's what God said. He said, look, I will never forsake you. I'll always be with you. You trust that promise. He, he said, look, I'll work all things out for the good of those that love the Lord. Trust that promise. He, he said that the Holy Spirit would guide you. Trust that promise. Believe in the promises of God. Whatever he tells you, he can do. Believe his promises. The third thing is take up his cause. His cause was simply to seek and save the lost. There is not a greater thing you can participate in than knowing that you've been a part of helping someone else change where they spend eternity by you being used by God. See, look, when Rick and Denise went down to Manaus and planted that church in the middle of the Amazon, and there's nobody there. How many of you, by the way, were here when we sent them there? Okay, look, see how much the church changes? So a lot of you don't have that same memory and that same victory and feeling of what was accomplished there that some of the rest did. Look, if, you had, if those of you were, if you hadn't given your money, that wouldn't have happened. If you, if you hadn't written a check, that wouldn't have happened. Many of you made trips down there to encourage them to keep things going. So a lot of things were involved in that thing taking place. Why? Because at the center of everything we do at Washington Road has got to be getting the gospel out to as many people as we can before Jesus comes again. That's our goal. When we break it down real simple, we want to love God and love others and share Jesus. That's all, ever, that's all it is to it. Christianity is not difficult to understand. It's just hard to practice sometimes. But when we get out of ourselves and we adapt the cause of Christ, that means there'll be sacrifice. That means there'll be death. That means there'll be things take place in my life that are different because I've decided, I've decided I'm going to follow Jesus no matter where he goes. And where did he go? To a cross and to a grave. But it's worth it. I already had a baptism this morning. Uh, that's a win. When you see someone be baptized in the Christ, that's a win. You say, okay, that's why we gather up and do what we do. When you hear of a church that was planted somewhere that wasn't there before, that's a win. That's what we do. When you hear of, of, of one kingdom and things they got going on, regardless of all the ways it takes place and all the talents that are used to happen, all of a sudden when you get there and there's a church in a place that never was a church before, that's a win. When someone's preaching the gospel over world radio in a place that never heard it before, that's a win. And you are a part of that. So if you want to be a member of this church, you take on the cause that Jesus took on to seek and save the lost because when it's all said and done the greatest things of victory that we celebrate won't be our style of worship it won't be how many Sundays we attended it won't be standing at the gate of Peter saying did Wednesday night count won't be that no it's seeing someone else that you know that this church helped get to heaven. Then you'll know, hey, we did what we needed to do. Let's keep focus. Let's stay the course on why God has us here as a church. Our cause is the same as Jesus's. Seek and save the lost. This criminal didn't know he would be given his testimony through the word to a church in West Monroe, Louisiana. He didn't know that. But man, I am so glad that God recorded the story of how one man's life changed in a day because he talked to Jesus. He believed him.
And he was a part of the cause of being saved. Father, we love you. Thank you for the day. I pray that we'll never let the sweet aroma of the gospel going to another man's heart ever leave us. That we'll never get off course. That we will keep the cause alive. I pray, Father, we'll do the everyday things we need to do as a church to make sure that more and more people get to hear about the good news of Jesus. And I pray today, Father, if there's anyone here that their life is broken and they need to get right with Christ, that they'll do it today. And I pray, Father, that like Christ, even when we're in the middle of pain, that we will still look out to keep the cause alive and have in our minds sharing the hope of the gospel. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you want your day to end better than it began and you've never obeyed the gospel, then that's what our invitation song is about. You walk down this aisle, confess Jesus as Lord, be baptized into Christ, start all over brand new. Your day can end a whole lot better than it began. Or maybe there's just some sin that's had a, been a stronghold in your life you need to break. Then you can, uh, you can come, the brothers and sisters together around you. We'll pray together. We'll walk together. Whatever we need to do to keep us on course to being what Jesus wants us to be. If you have a need today, please come while we stand and while Terry leads us in the song.